and they would all show up here under different categories because this is a Raspberry Pi it shows up as TLX Raspberry Pi if I had 10 of them that all show up in a line here and then if I had the Intel small form factor the heading here is uh, NUC32 and all those devices of that category um, appear in a line under that the heading name and um, the same goes for repurposed PC they show up here as separate devices too so okay what we want to do now is um, let's set the time zone so if you had more than one device you can right click here um, uh, right click on this here and select them all or deselect them all or invert the selection so if you've got a lot of devices you just click on the, on the name here and you can select them all instead of individually clicking in the checkbox um, let's give it a name too, the device host name that's the default um, I'll just call it John so that's the host name now that will appear in the network as um, host name of John so you need to use uh, letters and numbers there's certain characters you can't put in a host name but you'll have to look that up online so it says in, under the status here changed um, host name also we, we show the IP address the mode it's in web um, the firmware version 4.40 the license type is a trial the expiry date for the license is here 60 days or two months from now um, the MAC address how many hot fixes are installed none of course because we've only just installed TLX OS the client version that's the TMS client uh, which is the client end of the TMS connection so we have something which we call TMS client that runs inside TLX OS on the hardware device in this case it's a Raspberry Pi and we can see what version number it is 13.0 the time server that's the time server the Raspberry Pi is using to get the time description you can set another apart from the host name you can set a more descriptive name here if you want to um, the type of discovery you'll be using, how the Raspberry Pi is discovered is an auto time zone at GMT, a kernel version, and the um, TFM firmware maintenance version. So um, let's set the time now. So you click on zone, and um, I'm in Australia at the moment. Quite often I'm in the US, but at the moment I'm here. Australia, so down in Victoria. So Australia, Victoria, click on OK, and you can see the time over here's changed. So now it knows uh, the time, local time zone. Uh, I need to upload my CA certificate so that um, I can use HDX mode. You'll find that um, we have some certificates installed in TLX OS, but most companies create their own certificates and you need to get the client end certificate across to the device so the way we do that is with TMS so what I did then was clicked on the upload button and you can see I can upload different types of files PPD is a printer file SSH key if I want to um, SSH is the root user to the Raspberry Pi I need to upload my public SSH key if you want to change the wallpaper background image on the screen from that blue color to your own background wallpaper you can upload a PMG image and uh, CA certificates what we need to do for Citrix and certificate bundle is to do with Wi-Fi um, WPA2 Enterprise I won't go into that now so I need to get my CA certificate over so I need to find it and it's somewhere here amongst all this okay I finally found the directory that it's in and I, I use the browse button to, to find that directory and you can see the path here and my certificate CA certificates called thinlinks-ca.pem so now I'm going to upload it to the device 
and uh, once it's uploaded you'll see the status message here change so if I just click on OK because I've s you have to make sure you've selected the devices you want this installed to so if you've got 20 or 30 devices make sure they're all ticked with the checkbox selected and the certificate will be uploaded to all of them so click on OK are you sure you want to install it? Yes and the certificate's already installed now so um, what I'm going to do is log out of this session and show you how to use HDX mode because what we've done is we've set the time which is important for an SSL connection and we've installed the certificate one more thing we need to do is change the mode from web to HDX so if we go across to the mode icon click on that I can click here and you can see we've got a, quite a few different choices that you can use here we we want HDX Citrix, but other other modes you can um, select a SSH, which means it's just an SSH client. Um, RDP if you want to connect to a, a Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol session. VNC, X11s, uh, Linux um, Remote Desktop. TCM is um, um, connection manager that ThinLynx has developed, I won't go into that now, Spice is a Red Hat protocol, Web's the mode we're in now, NX is no machine, which is another remote desktop protocol, Telnet, TN3270 is a um, IBM mainframe client, Horizon VMware, that's um, the Horizon View Blast client for the Raspberry Pi, or x86 is their x86 version but on the Raspberry Pi we've been working uh, with VMware to get uh, the Raspberry Pi delivering um, very high performance very similar to Citrix almost like you could say they're probably identical really they both use H.264 so if you want VMware's Horizon instead of Citrix you can use it on the Raspberry Pi with TLX OS performance monitors are NMON which is, um, you can Google for that, but it's a, a way of monitoring things like CPU load, network performance, memory, and so on. And that runs on the actual client. Use the defined bespoke mode. Well, um, we've had quite a few customers that want to run their own custom software, and they need some way of selecting it for launch. And if they select this mode, um, they can install their own um, software and launch it using use the find bespoke digital signage is um, a digital signage mode we have that you can play images or videos or web content media players um, is a, um, a Linux media playing program anyway we're interested in HDX so let's go up to HDX Citrix click on that and you can see it says HDX you don't have to change any of these preset the settings that are all um, the defaults but you see the sub mode here is h.264 that's what we default to that means it's the client's going to use the Raspberry Pi is going to use the h.264 hardware decoder for best performance or you could select JPEG if you wanted to use JPEG mode instead where the CPU is doing all the work so you won't get quite as good performance but it can be um, very good nevertheless so so I just leave it defaults at this stage. I'm just going to have. Um, I could put in the server name here. So um, let's do that. Let's spell it first. Okay, so that's my storefront address, zendesktop.thinlinks.com. In this command line arguments box, if I put in the name of my um, Windows desktop, in this case it's uh, John Win64, if I put that in that box there and, and then click on OK, it will auto launch my desktop instead of going to the storefront where normally at storefront you select the desktop you want. 
you can um, configure this so it will connect direct to the desktop that you've put in this command line arguments box and if you want to auto log in so you don't have to enter the login ID and password every time you just click this box here and put the username, your domain, password and confirm the password and if you click up here, if you can select auto reconnect when you log out it's going to log straight back in again so what I normally do in those situations we've got customers that want um, someone to be able to log out and then have an empty login box for the next user so in that case you don't use auto login you leave that unconfigured and you click the auto reconnect box instead and um, when they, the user logs out they get a login box again for the next user which is empty so ok I'll just leave it at that now so I'll click on ok and this because I'm changing the mode this will log me out of this current session um, so I'll just click on are you sure you want to set it? Yes. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yes, you have to select. This is a mistake um, that uh, is easy to make. If you don't select the device, or if all your configuration information, you're going to have to enter it again. We are working on profiles that makes this easy. So once you've got one device configured, you can just clone it. And... Um, and copy it across to any selected device okay so I've got that in there now I've got to go back here and change this to HDX mode oh, and Okay, so now I can click on OK. Yes, so it's logged me out because I've changed the mode from web. And now this is the dialog box that comes up. So I think I need to put in my user at domain. So it's John at test and then I've my password. Okay, so I click on log on, wrong password. Okay. okay, now this is the Citrix storefront desktop just before we actually see the icons of the um, virtual machines first time that you you try and connect I click on log on and nothing happens you think what's going on here this is a bug and that we're working on to fix so this only happens the very first time what you've got to do is hold down alt press F4 and then launch the session again by clicking on new session then every time after this it You've got to reboot the device too uh, for it to remember that you've done this. So, um, but I won't do that just now. So every login from now on will be okay as long as I reboot this, and that way it remembers that uh, it's gone through that stage. Okay, so log on, and this time when I click log on, it's actually going to take me to the storefront and here's we're back at storefront so if I click on my desktop my Windows 7 desktops launched and you see we're back to where we were because the session still running it only logged me out or broke the connection because I changed the mode to HDX so you can see the modes HDX all the information's there So that's the end of the introduction to TLX OS.